Anthony Albanese says Australia would maintain full control of its nuclear submarines acquired as part of the AUKUS agreement should the country encounter a dispute with the US or UK over military strategy. The Prime Minister insists in the event of any such conflict, the deployment of military assets would be a decision for Australia as a sovereign nation. In a speech to the National Press Club, he described the AUKUS pact as the future, while also flagging the potential for an increase in defence spending in response to the Defence Strategic Review. AUKUS is about the future. It further formalises the common values and the shared interests that our three nations have in preserving peace and upholding the rules and institutions that secure our region and our world. Well, joining me live here in the Perth studio is the former Labor leader, former Defence Minister, former US Ambassador, a man who has far too many hats that he's worn over the years, Kim Beasley. Lovely to see you. Thank you for coming in. Good to be with you. I know you were watching cl very closely that speech at the Press Club yesterday. What stood out to you? Well, for me, the most gratifying sentence in it was that Defence was going to get the resources it needed to do the jobs that the, uh, the report and the government in its response to the report um, has outlined for Defence. Because the one thing I've always felt sorry for Richard Miles, as opposed to when I was Defence Minister, is when I was Defence Minister, I had the resources for the threat that we confronted at the time. We were at 2.5% of GDP, 9% of the budget. Now uh, Richard is at less than 2 not much less, but at less than two, and about 6% of the budget. Not enough. So the fact that the Prime Minister said that, I think, was critical and for my point, gladdened my heart. We've heard a lot about the threats that Australia faced this week. We've heard from the Prime Minister yesterday, the ASIO boss earlier yeah. in the week. How do you characterise the threats Australia faces? We have no warning time. Now, when I was Defence Minister, we assumed of a direct attack on our interests or our nation uh, that we would have that capacity to do it built up over 15 years. Well, it actually took a lot longer. But nevertheless, that's where we are now. So we're at zero warning time. That's the worst position we have been in since World War II. Point one, point two. We are now front line. The Americans are starting to treat us as a front line state. They've looked at the capabilities here, the air bases, the naval bases, the army bases. They said, that's it. Uh, we need to not only look east-west, which is how they normally look, we also need to look north-south. So now they're interested in all the Australian facilities. So, uh, so that's an interesting issue. And then because we are frontline, because we are capable, because we're doing things like joint research uh, with the Americans and the British, uh, we are massively an intelligence target. We're an intelligence target for cyber espionage, the Prime Minister talked about that a bit. And we are a target for what you might call human intelligence activity. And that is uh, Mike Burgess, uh, who's the director of ASIO, uh, and he noted the unusual character of the fact that he was making a speech like that, I think is a pretty fair indication that they have detected a lot of trouble. Mm. And that's where the AUKUS agreement comes in. The Prime Minister was questioned heavily about Australia's sovereignty. Do you think Australia's sovereignty is at risk through the AUKUS agreement? Oh, absolutely not. Uh, we make our own decisions on when we go to war and when we don't. But you also need to comprehend that when you choose to have allies, uh, when, when you choose to benefit from the intelligence they provide, and you deliver it yourself as well, your best defence is to be in harmony with them. So, yes, our sovereignty is absolute, and everybody sort of wanders around uh, looking at the inwardness and the outwardness of that, um, when actually what they ought to be do looking at is, what does this all do for us? And uh, that's what I tend to look at. But at the same time, I understand fully we're sovereign. Mm. The Defence Strategic Review will mm. be able to read most of that when it comes up for the May budget and we'll see the government's response to it. What is your expectation? I'm not sure you're going to see most of that. I, I think this is a different Defence Review from those that I recollect. I mean, the difference between uh, the white paper we produced and in 1987 and the in-house white paper, because you always do the two, I would have said be a few paragraphs. The difference now will be pages and pages, because the stuff that we're looking now is highly technologically uh, secret. 
and um, you just can't release an awful lot of what you're capable of. Uh, as you could back in the day, you can't now. And, uh, but there'll be enough released for the government to be able to say, well, we're buying these missiles, we're buying these mines, we're buying these delivery systems. We've changed strategy. My old strategy of Defence of Australia, I don't do anymore. What Richard Miles has been talking, Defence Minister Miles has been talking about is defence at distance. So they're actually looking at uh, going forward, at least with missile systems and the like, and of course submarines, and um, which is slightly different than the more uh, layered defence immediately on our approaches, which is what we used to. Because a lot of the focus around AUKUS has been on the nuclear submarines. Yes. But it's much bigger than that, isn't it? Yeah, and, and we'll see the results of the other pillars of it much earlier, uh, because it's already proceeding now. Those research programs are going on as, uh, as we speak. The submarines are going to be a pretty long time. Mm. We know that our relationship with the US is just so crucial in mm. any debate we're having about defence. We have a new ambassador, the former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd, heading to do your old job in yeah. Washington. Is he the right man for the job? Well, it'd be a bit of a challenge for him, and I think he understands that. He's an ex-foreign affairs official, so he knows the restraints and constraints that are upon him. The thing about the job in the US is it's, it's very much a nuts and bolts job. It's very much about making sure things work. It's not about the big stance. It's not about the, uh, the great projection of the objectives of the nation. That is a matter for Penny Wong and uh, Mr Miles and uh, the Prime Minister. They do that. You don't. Uh, what you do is make sure everything works. The big challenge, I think, and I think he's up to it, the big challenge for, for Kevin is that he has to get all these particular things in place. He's got to do the negotiation or part of the negotiations which help with putting the Americans into our facilities up north, for example. You know, what are the terms and conditions? What will the capabilities be? He will have to be in conversation with the Americans about the detail of the nuclear submarines that we are we're going to see developed here and, and purchased and operating. It's a nuts and bolts job. I found it humbling because I've been a minister and a deputy prime minister and the ambassadors are way below them, way below them. Mm. You're just a cog in a massive policy development wheel, an important cog, but no more than that. So that's, it's going to be interesting to see how he handles that. How do you think he'll handle it? You've known Kevin Rudd pretty well over the years. Yeah, I, I, I don't think he'll find it easy. Uh, but I think he knows exactly what is required because he used to provide it. Uh, he was, he started sort of working life as a foreign affairs official. And um, so he does know how an embassy runs. It wasn't in a big embassy when he was a foreign affairs official. Um, actually, no, that's not true. I first met him. Uh, when I was in China, he was at the embassy there. So he was used to a big embassy in that regard. But he also knows that, uh, uh, absolutely, that he's a servant. I, I remember once uh, I was sitting down next to Tony Abbott and uh, we've got the congressional delegation for the Democrats in front of us. He's doing his visit. And, um, and he turns to me and he says, well, well, no, Kim won't agree with me, me on this because he has an opposing view. And I said... Prime Minister, I'm your servant. Mm -hmm. And um, that, uh, and the, the, everybody laughed, but, uh, but that is true. Mm. Prime Minister, I'm your servant. Mm. Well, Kim Beasley, you have uh, been a servant to the Australian people for many years, over many roles now, and we always do appreciate you sharing your insights with us. Thank you for joining us. It's lovely, and I'm glad Sky operates here from Perth. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. So am I. Kim, thank you very much.